Google exposed Exotic Lily, a group that works with Conti, an ATM rootkit can steal banking data, and TrickBot targets Microtik routers. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for March 22nd, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. We've got some more leaks about Conti this week, so let's go ahead and get into the first news story. Google's tag, aka the Threat Analysis Group, has discovered that Exotic Lily is actually an initial access broker linked to Conti and Diavol ransomware groups. This broker uses phishing campaigns to access target networks. Then it sells access to networks to ransomware gangs. Exotic Lily was sending over 5,000 emails a day to over 650 different organizations, so we know that they were very active in their phishing campaigns. They targeted IT, cybersecurity, and healthcare industries, though recently their targets have widened. TAG has been following Exotic Lily activity since September of 2021, when they first observed a zero date in Microsoft MS HTML being exploited by that group. TAG concluded that this is a broker who works closely with Fin12 and CrowdStrike slash Conti slash TrickBot hacking groups. Of course, they have so many different names, it's kind of hard to keep track. Now, speaking of Conti, we are also learning more and more about this hacking group every single week. Just this past week, Wire shared an overview of 60,000 chat messages that were leaked online. Now, this tells us that the group actually works like other jobs. They have an HR department, for example, and they have salaries. The group just saw more of their source code leaked as well, with Conti leaks on Twitter uploading version 3 of Conti ransomware, along with a decryptor just a couple of days ago. Bleeping Computer was able to successfully compile the source code, and they were able to use the ransomware locker and the decryptor with no problems. Now, thanks to this new leak, it could give researchers and engineers a chance to analyze this malware once again, create new defensive techniques, and potentially additional decryption tools as well. We haven't heard about a new ATM banking hack in quite some time, but this one is actually pretty cool. Mandiant has been following a group called UNC2891, aka Light Basin, for a couple of years due to their financially motivated hacks and the attacks that have continually targeted telecom companies and managed service providers. Light Basin has a new Unix rootkit, which is previously undiscovered, that is being used to steal ATM data and make fraudulent transactions. The rootkit, dubbed Cake Tap, can infect Oracle Solaris servers while adding connections to an attacker-controlled server, hiding itself by obfuscating network connections, files, and processes, then stealing banking card and PIN verification data. It looks for messages that are bound for the payment hardware security module on these products, which is a hardware chip that manages cryptographic keys for card signatures like the EMV chip, the magnetic strip, and the pin. CakeTap finds those messages and changes fraudulent card information to look legitimate. Legitimate data for valid cards is sent straight through to the HSM module like normal, though still saved, but this keeps it hidden and thus it does not raise any red flags. This allows CakeTap to authorize a fraudulent card to withdraw money from an ATM. Often these machines are built on Linux or Unix systems that rely on security through obscurity. Lightbasin takes advantage of this by using easily hidden rootkits to infect those machines, sometimes for years before being discovered. Mandiant also mentioned in their reporting that there are similarities between UNC2891 and UNC1945, two different hacking groups, but they cannot attribute the attacks to one single target. They also included indicators of compromise in their report. Before I get into story number three, it's time for my Hush Puppy Perk Level Patreon shout out. So a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you to Canyon, RJ, and Molten Llama for joining on patreon.com slash threatwire. And shout out, of course, to everyone who supports the show. I truly appreciate it. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story. 
Attackers are targeting routers, and this is nothing new, but we do have some major updates to a major vulnerability and attack that we are seeing in the wild. According to Microsoft, Mikrotik devices, like routers, are being used to spread TrickBot Trojans, which are then used to steal banking credentials. Now that part is not new. TrickBot was discovered many years ago in 2016, and it has grown into an advanced modular and multi-stage malware product with a whole suite of tools, including ransomware, used by a variety of different hacker groups. Now, Mikrotik routers have been vulnerable to attacks for a long time, with hundreds of thousands still being vulnerable to infection as recently as December, according to a report by Eclipsium. The Mikrotik attacks have been happening for a very long time, but we never knew exactly why these specific devices were targets. Well, Microsoft discovered that these are targets because they have a Linux-based operating system called Router OS, which allows for remotely piping commands using SSH. Mikrotik routers are used as proxies, so an attacker sends one command that then causes a chain reaction with a whole bunch of devices that is advantageous to that botnet campaign. Mikrotik routers are used to conceal the attacker's CNC server, their command and control server. Infected machines don't send data or commands straight to the command and control server. They send them through a compromised router first, then onto the malicious server. That means the infection is obfuscated in a way because anyone analyzing this data would see an infected machine sending data to the IP address of a router, but they would not be able to see the location of the attacker's server. Microsoft just released a new forensics tool used to scan Mikrotik products for signs of infection, and that tool is called Router OS Scanner. Admins can use this tool to find potential intrusions, but they also strongly advise changing the default password, obviously, blocking port 8291, changing the SSH port from default 22 to any other port, updating and patching your routers, and using a secure VPN if you need to remotely access your router. Now, do you wanna see more tech videos from me? Check out my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel, Hack5. I'm Shannon Morse and I'll see you on the internet. And bonus points to anyone in the comments who knows what this t-shirt is from. See you next time, bye.